Hello and welcome to the Any Art Nettie cooking channel and I'm Nettie. Now here for the first time I thought I'd show you how it went my first attempt at making croissants. Now as I have a art channel I thought it appropriate to do a drawing of a croissant to show you so that's there. I've got an Instagram if you want to see more of my art and the link to my art channel will be down below. So first time making croissants, let's see how it goes. I've got 150 millilitres of water, that's at around about 40 to 46 degrees Celsius there. And I'm going to add a packet of yeast to that. Um, got 250 grams here of strong white bread flour. Now you need a flour which has got more gluten in it. Strong white flour is brilliant for that. And next time I make this I'm going to add this sugar to the yeast rather than to the flour because the yeast will love that. And four grams, just four grams of salt, just a very small amount will be going into the flour, never the yeast, okay? So that yeast was left for about five minutes or so to ferment and it will be better if I add the sugar next time adding that into the flour. Next I'm adding 25 grams of butter which I melted in the microwave it only needs about not even 30 seconds and one egg yolk. Now I'm using a duck egg and that egg white which I didn't use will be going on to do the glaze so just need to mix that up all together so it's all incorporated and you'll see it's nice and elastic and that means that the gluten is developed really well and yes that is a Wayne's World t-shirt excellent <laughs> so I find if you don't have a thermometer to check the temperature of the water I'd use a drizzle a bit of the water onto your thermometer and if you think of this as the free bear story if it feels comfortable the yeast will find it comfortable too so too cold it won't it'll just remain dormant and too hot you'll kill it off now what I've done here is I put a light smattering of flour onto the surface and I'm going to knead that for around about 10 minutes just the way you would making a loaf except this is a more enriched dough because it's got egg yolk in it. Now I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes in a bowl and pop some cling film on the top. Now where the inside of the cling film is on the bowl I would put some oil which hasn't got any taste to it, a really tasteless oil just in case that sticks to your bowl but this is a very big bowl so it wasn't gonna do that so gonna leave that for around about half an hour to an hour something like that so I'll come back now and it's doubled in size and I'm just gonna pop that onto uh -huh. some greaseproof paper when it come out there we go So now is the time when you're going to start rolling it out and if you find it won't stretch when you roll it the best thing to do is to put it back in the fridge for around about half an hour to an hour again you'll find it much easier it will start to roll for you then but you haven't gone wrong or anything like that there's no worries just there was a bit of the dough left in the bowl so I just popped that on the top now what I'm going to do, this is my method, I'm not saying this is the exact way to do it, I'm just giving you tips of what I found I'd improve on and stuff like that. I folded it into a rectangle within the greaseproof paper. I probably leave a bit of room on all four sides and then started rolling it. And I've put that in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour. Now this is the butter layer where we're making a laminations, I was going to say lamentations then, I'm thinking of Conan the film with Arnie and laminations and make your butter layer. So 
yeah just get the butter there measure that out and measure out your butter and make sure it's it doesn't really have to be actually because you are going to roll it out but get a piece of greaseproof paper and pop that into the middle of your greaseproof paper make sure you keep your butter as cold as possible and I find the best method for rolling it out is to press it down with a rolling pin just like I'm doing there because it won't very easily roll like you would with your normal pastry like that see so press it down if you can roll it but the main thing of this the tip the biggest tip I can give you for making your dough for croissants is to keep the butter as cold as possible now press that down like that as much as you can now that is going to fit in the middle of the dough and we'll show you that in a minute once we come to it so I'm rolling out my dough now like I say the best thing to do is if you find it's not stretching anymore when you roll it is to pack it up again and put it back in the fridge and it'll be easier to roll out then otherwise you're just stretching and you can see the gluten strands now I'm making that into a rectangle shape as much as I can you can use a pizza cutter if needed to make it perfectly square but I think I'll find I'll do that with rulers and pizza cutters and precision next time it didn't I suppose it doesn't make much difference but if you're making them up with absolute perfection you want them to be 10 by 15 20 by 25 centimeters and I can actually make a recipe sheet you'll find the recipe in the description below to print off there'll also be bits to color in for example outlines of a croissant if you want to do that like I say I'm primarily I'm an art channel on YouTube or should I say I have an art channel on YouTube so I thought it would only be appropriate with my channel if you want to check out my other videos as well I'd, I'd love that that'd be brilliant don't have to of course but what I tend to do is make a recipe sheet that you can print off and it'll also have elements to colour in as well so that's where it fits in with the art channel so let's see I'm not going to go over any of the edges of that greaseproof paper I'm going to roll that out and try to keep it as much as you can in a rectangle shape so again all measurements and how thick you want the pastry the dough even will be in the recipe below so I'm just going to pop that butter layer now right in the middle of the dough and keep hold of all I reuse all these pieces of paper if I can and fold the dough over again this isn't a precision job you can watch many videos on YouTube where they show you the exact measurements and everything this is the first time of trying it out now then I've packed up that dough there just going to use a light smatter in a flour again you don't want a big thick layer of it at all lay that on the piece of grease proof I'm going to fold it up again and then roll it out so again this is my method that I use where you can press it down because obviously it's got that really cold butter in it now so it's better if you press it down like like so like I'm doing pat it down with the rolling pin and because I've got that rectangle shape made with the grease proof it's hopefully going to keep that shape so again there's other methods and I'm not saying which is right or wrong I'm just showing you the way that I do it I'm a complete unprofessional I'm a home baker 
and you don't get finesse <laughs> I'm afraid but if you're looking for finesse I'd watch another person do it but I think this is good to show someone making it for the first time because when you watch somebody who's making it with precision and finesse it can be a little bit off-putting I want to show somebody who's a beginner at it so it hopefully give you some confidence to be well if this beginner can do it I can do it as well plus you got the art element to help relax you to color in there yeah, that that's that's why I do what I do and I hope it helps at least one person out there so you can see I've folded one third up and the top of it I've folded one third down so it's almost like an envelope so fold over the grease proof again to completely cover it and that is going to go in the fridge for around about a hour to two hours and pat it down again you don't have to do that but I'm just trying to get as many as much lamination as possible so when the hopefully fingers crossed anyway so I, I already know the result this is like three days later but you're watching it for the first time so I think altogether maybe you could do about seven of these as in putting it in rolling it folding it up and putting it in the fridge maybe about seven times altogether but at least three I'd say to get good layers this is just me making sure that it's a rectangle shape but there you go <laughs> again my method the way I do it so it can give you a bit of confidence if you're if you're making croissants for the first time so here we are the first refrigeration is done that butter is kept nice and cold and it's just a little bit sticky so that's where I'd put some very very light layer of flour down there so I've got a different t-shirt on there and I was baking at the same time I was doing my gluten free ones and I like to change t-shirts so I don't get any contamination these are my husband to be's croissants that I made them as well so I'm just going to rip off a very left handed there <laughs> rip off a piece of grease proof to put over the top of that because it is you need it I needed it a bit bigger so one piece wasn't enough and as I say I reuse as much as I can and pop that on the top there and roll it out into a bigger rectangle I'd say like I say in between these folds I mean up to seven of them at least three I would say the more time in between folds in the fridge the better so if you can do that at, at least an hour at most maybe three hours the key and the t the best thing I can tell you with all this the key to it is is keeping that butter as cold as possible even if you can refrigerate it maybe that the butter before you start working with it it'll work out so much better and I did have a really good rolling pin but the last place we were in unfortunately it had a bit of damp so the rolling pin was really wet I had one of those big wooden ones so I'm going to get one of them again because it's really going to be a big help with something like this. So I'm just going to peel that top layer off there and we're going to do our folds again. One third fold up like that, pat it down and then one third down so it makes a nice envelope and pop that in the middle there. Just going to whack a thin layer of the flour over the top of that and there we go press it down like that again because that butter is really cold now a little thing I have to say about the butter what I do is I'd splash out a bit 
because this is something you're not going to have very often croissants uh, you can see the amount of butter that went in that is a that's a whole block of butter what we call a block of butter in the uk in america i think it's a stick of butter isn't it but i'm just saying you have them as often as you want but this for us is a rare treat i would splash out and buy the best butter that you can now what i'm using here is a baking block it's like there's one called stork i think but this is a supermarket in the uk called asda their own brand baking block but if you can and you can i can't tolerate dairy unfortunately i'm allergic to it i would buy the best butter that you can splash out on so to, to make the croissants as the best croissants that they'll turn out a lot better for it but this is a baking block that i'm using but when i say butter that's what i mean <laughs> so i just folded it up again and folded it into the grease proof paper and that is going to go in for its second time now and i would do that again at least three times that process do it again where you fold it up one third and fold it one one third down so that's come out the fridge now if you can imagine actually the third one i put in for 24 hours or overnight so make sure on that last one you put it in at 24 hours at least overnight in the fridge so one of those grease proof paper now i'm going to reuse that and put it on the baking tray and this is the moment where it gets a lot more fun three days work for it turned out five croissants i think it seems a lot but it's definitely worth it because they really are lovely now then at this stage again i'm just rolling that out into the big rectangle now but at this stage what i'd say is if you're finding when you're rolling it out again that it's not stretching it's starting to you roll it out and it shrinks back i'd pop it in the fridge again like that the way you've got it and you'll find it'll roll out a lot quicker a lot better you'll find out it'll roll it'll roll out a lot better so maybe about half an hour again till for a half an hour again to half uh, leave it in the fridge for about half an hour to an hour and it'll it'll roll out much better again so what i'm gonna do once i finish rolling it out is to cut it into a rectangle now any of those off cuts you can make them into mini misshapen croissants don't waste it and chuck it away make sure you use it so as well the knife i realized the knife i was using wasn't very sharp i find it would be better to use a pizza cutter now again all the measurements and everything how thick you need your dough will be in the recipe below and some ideas are for instead of just basic dough where you're going to put jam or marmalade or anything like that i thought it might be actually nice to give some ideas on what else you could do with the croissants i think it would be nice with chocolate maybe a layer of marzipan baked into it would be really nice another idea would be cinnamon and raisin where you put a thin layer of cinnamon down and throw some raisins into it and then roll it up and you could serve them once they're baked a savoury option would be cheese and ham so just some ideas there so you're gonna have another proof unfortunately after this i'd say with this recipe if you need something quick forget it <laughs> unless the it'd take at least a day maybe to to do but this is the kind of recipe you do where you've got maybe a few days before to prepare it 
So again, I'm just cutting those trims off and reuse them, make them into misshapen croissants. And then we are going to get to actually rolling them out, and I call this the fun bit. So I'm going to basically, again, measurements there, and making so there's three the same shape on the bottom there and then the knife is going in between those marks at the bottom and sometimes you can get six out of that I got five out of that so that corner top right there I'm cutting down and meeting that first cut on the trying to work out bottom right there so that's made a triangle again use a pizza cutter there for sure <laughs> then the next cut on the top there that is going to meet that there to make another triangle you see what I'm doing all the I'm gonna put out some diagrams in the recipe below so no worries if this is a bit hard to follow the way I'm explaining it So I've made one, two, three, four, five triangles there. Again, this would be so much easier with a sharper knife, but it's like, well, why did I choose that knife out of all of them? So fun bit now, definitely going to get hold of that middle one, stretch out the corners at the bottom there, and then roll it up and roll that up as tight as you can. Now this is where it'd be nice with a layer of marzipan cut into the triangles as well and rolling up a marzipan layer so the end tip there flatten that down and put it so it's placed underneath the croissant now what I forgot to do is to make them into a C shape I did that afterwards I probably did it off camera oh it's a bit sticky so just lay that one aside again pull out the corners oh there's just a little cut there pull out the corners on the bottom as you're doing it and roll it up as tight as you can and the tip you just get your finger and make, flatten that into it there you go like that with my thumb place that down onto the baking sheet now there's no need to get the oven ready yet because you've got to prove them and I'll show you that once I get to it so again pull out the corners with your thumb roll it up tight as you can bump with your thumb there flatten that down that side meets the because if you don't do that and the tip isn't on the bottom of the croissant what will happen is that will flip up and it it just just for pretty reasons really it's gonna look so much better if it's flattened against the croissant but yeah that bit on the bottom where the tip is so what you do now leave that for two hours you can either leave that with a sheet of cling film on or get another tray which is a bit deeper and put that over the top of it they're going to double in size so i used some cling film again off camera there you can see they've got a nicer shape to them the traditional c shape shall we call it so gonna leave them to rise for two hours once that's done you get your oven on 200 degrees Celsius that's 180 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 6 so we got our oven on it's been two hours they've been proven and proving should I say and we're gonna get our oven on look at that they've doubled in size now what I actually did behind the scenes was it was late at night once I'd done that I left them overnight at that stage don't do that I would leave them to prove at that stage for two hours before you're gonna bake them this is what happens but what how they can be potentially rescued I found out was to put it in the fridge for about an hour and they should rise up nice again because they're kind of flattened out haven't they a bit so I'm just using the egg wash there like I said one egg and the, the egg white that I didn't use, I put into that egg wash and mixed it up. So there we go. 
So one egg layer there, 200, 180 degrees Fahrenheit gas mark 6 for around about 15 to 20 minutes until they turn golden brown. Now leave them to cool on the wire rack because they are still cooking inside. And there we go. I served them with a peach jam which the recipe will be coming up the video for that will be coming very very soon so do look out for that maybe in the next day or two and I probably baked them a bit too close together because you can see and you can see the bottom there it's nice and baked doing the Paul Hollywood test there beautiful <laughs> and there we go lovely homemade you can't beat it so yeah, recipe for peach, peach jam coming very soon. I use tinned. You can also use frozen or fresh as well if you've got it and it's in season. You see, we couldn't wait to eat these. So we were like, right, let's get them now. <laughs> let's eat them now while they're hot. I would leave them to cool, but still, you can warm them up for about five minutes in the oven. Cut them open. You see the steaming? Ow, my fingers. <laughs> And I just use some flour there, of course you can use real butter and serve them with some flora, not sponsored, not affiliated, <laughs> obviously, but yeah, there we go. Lovely, delicious, hot, buttered croissants with peach jam. Spot on, lovely. Now I'm blowing my own trumpet there and it, and it's so much nicer than shop bought honestly it's worth is it worth the effort for three days yes absolutely definitely 100 percent will make them again at some point definitely will try cheese and ham i'm actually having the corn ham i'm going to try it with that and cathedral city have brought out a dairy free cheese so i'm going to definitely try that together with a croissant next time and make them so again recipe and all measurements and stuff like that that you need will be in the description below and there'll be some little coloring elements there that i've drawn for you to be able to color in and whatever enjoy making it let me know if you do in the comments below and also look out for the peach jam which will be coming very soon there we are lovely thank you for watching and i shall see you again very very soon and bye bye for now